In today's video, I'm gonna talk about 10 settings that you guys should know on the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. Let's do it. Okay guys, so today's your lucky day. We're gonna look at amazing settings and features that you guys can find with the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. Now, all these are really simple stuff. They're not gonna be like, you don't have to be Einstein to know these things. A is the gravity constant of 32 and T is the time it took for that rock to come back down. We're gonna do a quick overview on each of these settings or features and I'll just briefly run you guys through what they are, what they're good for and just stuff like that. Now if you guys are new to the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW and you want to know how to install and uninstall the firmware, I'll let you guys know with the time code above here. You guys can skip to that and install it and that should get you started with Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. Now for all you experienced Einsteins out there, let's get into this video. Let's look at those top 10 settings and features on the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern. Let's do it. All right, at number one, we have release without shutter. What this means is that when we use manual lenses or vintage glass, there are no electronic signals being sent to the camera for us to be able to take a photo or video when we press the shutter button. So we need to enable release without shutter. Now to do that, we simply open the Canon menu, head towards the custom functions tab, which can be located at the end of the menu, and then find release without shutter. Once you've found it, enable it, and then we're good to go. At number two, we have manual mode. Now a lot of people have been saying they cannot adjust aperture, shutter, ISO, and so on. This is because you are most likely in auto movie mode and you need to switch to manual mode. In order to do this, we need to enter the EOS M dashboard and at the top left, you will see a camera icon. Select that and switch from movie auto exposure to manual exposure. Sometimes we can't enter the dashboard when we press the info button. This is because it has been set by another configuration in the Magic Lantern menu. For example, in the tab seven, live view display presets might be enabled to switch LV presets through the info button. So you can disable that for now until you switch to the manual exposure mode. At number three, we have naming custom modes. Now, as you guys know, the EOS M has a range of different modes to which you can assign your own settings and presets. If you're not familiar with this, you can check out my EOS M raw settings video in the description. For those who don't know, we can change the names of these modes instead of having, you know, custom mode one, custom mode two, custom mode three, because sometimes you might get confused as to which preset you have set for each custom mode. So to rename these custom modes, all we do is access the SD card from the system we use, go into ML folder, then to settings, and rename the custom folders after you have set each one to your own liking in camera. Have fun guys. At number four, we have power save in live view. Now we know the Canon EOS M doesn't have the best battery life, especially when we're shooting in the high resolution modes. I can just really drain the battery quickly. So these settings here should help with the battery life. In the Canon menu, the second wrench, we have two options, LCD brightness and power saving. Reducing the brightness will help for sure, but sometimes we need the brightness in order to see the screen properly. So if we head over to the power saving sub tab, we can set a limit for the, both the LCD and camera to save power. We can, for example, enable the LCD to turn off after three minutes and enable the camera to turn off after a certain time. Now, if you want more power saving options to fine tune, in the Magic Lantern menu, tab seven, select power save in live view. And then you have all these power saving options. For example, you can enable dim display, which will reduce brightness for you after a set time. You can turn off global draw after a set time as well, which will improve the performance of the camera while recording. And then you can bypass the 30 minute limit of the Canon firmware. However, it may cause overheating. I haven't tested shooting more than 30 minutes, but this could be interesting. At number five, we have sub tab reducer. Now this is a really cool feature in tab seven of the Magic Lantern menu. At the very bottom, enable customize menus. From here, go through the tabs and sub tabs and then double press the set button until you see an X mark appear beside the settings you wish to hide. Then disable customize menu for the effect to take place. This will allow for a more minimal Magic Lantern menu, giving you only the features you want to see. This will definitely help for a smoother navigation of the Magic Lantern menu. At number six, we have customize buttons. Go to the movie tab three in the Magic Lantern menu. Towards the bottom, select customize buttons. These will assist you with button shortcuts for video and photo. 
The first option is times three crop toggle, which will crop into the sensor by around three times. This is good for lenses where you have vignetting, so you can bypass that. The next is focus aid, which when set to default mode, will crop the live view by times 10. This doesn't influence the actual footage, just what you see in the live view when you half press the shutter. This is good for nailing your focus, it gives you better clarification, and I find that it works absolutely perfect. The next option is gain. When you press the up or down button on the wheel, you can assign ISO control, aperture control, or both, as well as the info switch, which will switch between real-time live view and the actual raw frame that is being recorded with Magic Lantern Raw. At number seven, we have live view digit peaking. Now this option can be found in the sixth tab of the Magic Lantern menu at the very top. Once enabled, it will sharpen everything you see in your live view and will help to clarify your focus. This is a setting that I always enable and it helps me to focus better in all the raw modes that I use and it works better than the focus peaking option in Magic Lantern. I definitely wouldn't touch that. If you want to also set sharpness to plus seven in your picture profile, that will definitely help increase the sharpness in the live view, uh, but not in the footage as you're capturing raw video. If you're planning to take photos, just make sure you set plus seven sharpness back to zero. At number eight, we have shutter count. When you buy a Canon USM camera, or you already own one, but you aren't sure about the shutter count, we can head over to the debug tab in the Magic Lantern menu. It's around towards the end, and this is how we can find the shutter count. Towards the bottom, we can see that I have released 13,000 shutters, and the life expectancy of the EOS M is around 100,000 shutter counts. So we definitely have plenty of life here. The reason why this may be important is for when you want to sell it, you can state that the camera hasn't been used much and that it still has plenty of life in it. So you're gonna get really good value out of your camera. At number nine, we have modified settings. This can be found in the last tab of the Magic Lantern menu. This feature allows you to see every setting that you have set in the Magic Lantern menu and you can make quick adjustments from there rather than going through each of the individual tabs. I find this extremely helpful when I'm out shooting video and need to find the things that I may or may not need and then change or disable them on the go. Also when you've mucked up something but you're not sure where it's coming from, this is a good way to see all your settings that you've enabled and then make adjustments from there. All right, the last one at number 10, this is the exposure simulator. This is more so for photography. We all like taking photos too on the Canon OSM, but sometimes things can go wrong. For example, the exposure in video mode can look all normal. It looks absolutely fine. But once we switch to the photo mode, the screen can look much darker than usual. This is because exposure sim or simulator is enabled in the first tab. So disable that, then enable exposure override to control your own exposure, rather than the camera making the adjustments for you. Once these things are done, you're ready to take some awesome photos. All right, so the process of installing and uninstalling Magic Lantern is very easy. To install Magic Lantern, just download the builds on my Google Drive from the description below on the YouTube channel or within the EOSM forum where Danny updates us on the new builds to test. Don't get them from the Magic Lantern website because they are quite outdated and just don't work as well. So once you download the build, extract it and paste the three files onto a blank SD card and then update firmware in camera from the camera icon and not from the movie icon. Make sure also that you have enough battery, otherwise the update won't proceed. Once the camera updates, it will tell you to wait 60 seconds for Magic Lantern to uninstall or restart the camera to enable Magic Lantern to be installed. And that's pretty much it. Once you uninstall Magic Lantern, just be sure to format the card in camera. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Hope this video has helped you out in some way. These are my 10 settings or features that you guys should already know on the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern Raw. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll surely see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.